Disoriented content. Content. Listener discretion is advised. Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Love line. Love line. Coast to coast. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Dr. Drew, board-certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. What's happening there, Drew Skirt? Not much. How are you? I'm tired. Yeah, I can see that. <sighs> What's the matter? Well, a couple of things. We did uh, three man shows on uh, Saturday. Oh, that I guess is, that's that yesterday. Is bad times. Three's a lot. Oh. Saturday's, a, you know, you know that's my people Sabbath. Yeah, I know. My people Sabbath is uh, is Saturday and uh, Sunday and uh, Tuesday. Thursday. Well, then it comes around to Saturday again. I guess Monday we, uh, we some of us some of my people work, but that's you know funny. you know what a puss I am. I hate to work on the weekends. And then today it was off to uh, beautiful Lancaster to uh, go to the maximum security prison over there and get a taste for what it would be like to be incarcerated. Oh, it sounds very relaxing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you want to... I mean, uh, for first off, hey, I thought libraries were depressing. <laughs> I hadn't been to prison. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. I thought going over to my mom's house was depressing. No, I hadn't been to prison. Th this is a depressing place, this prison. Hang on now. The garage you lived in as a young adult where you crapped in the popcorn can must have been close. Showering in the hose and the hose in the outside. That that was a uh, that was prison without the food, really, yeah. Yeah. But the food is really bad. So oh, that, I see. Extra, I see. Now, let me, let me tell you. I don't want to sound like uh, this has turned to an episode of Scared Straight, but listen to me. We got a lot of, we got a lot of young people on the fringe who listen to the show. Could be spending some time in lockdown. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. This prison, well, I went to the one out in Lancaster, which is really just a big desert out in the middle of uh, is, is Southern it, California. Is it like a maximum security? Yeah, this no, one I, is. Our people, our listeners, yeah, uh, they're busy having parole violations. You know what I mean? Yeah, but here's the deal. This, uh, this prison housed everybody, pretty much. You'd end up at this place. Really? Or something like it. Uh. Yeah, I mean, listen, here's the thing about prison. It's a little uh, luck of the draw. Okay. You can get a decent one. You can get a bad one, too. Right, right. And uh, I happen to be in the maximum security wing of this prison, I but see. it wasn't much different architecturally from the rest of the place. Got it, got First it. off, the whole place reminded me of junior college. Ooh. I mean, from an architectural standpoint, it smelled like it. The people are a little bit brighter at the prison. Yeah. I, I got to give them that. A little less hacky sack, a little less pot. <laughs> well, not the same amount of pot, but less hacky sack, yeah. And uh, same things, fencing, a lot of oranges and browns, lots of uh, linoleum on the floor, and a sort of medicinal meets crap smell mm -hmm. floating, hovering, death hovering in the air. But the, the cells in this prison are 6 by 10, and... If you want to know what 6 by 10 is, and people have a little difficulty with measurements sometimes, I, put my, I spread my hands out wide, and I touched one wall and touched the other wall simultaneously that, six feet. in the cell. Yeah. That's 6 feet, and that is the width of the cell block. Yeah, yeah. There's two guys who stay in there. Ooh. Yeah, two guys. And 6 foot is a, is a closet. It's going I mean, to cut down your masturbation and, and napping. Either that or it would add to it. I'd like to, I'd like to take that challenge, actually. <laughs> I mean, here's what six foot is. Everyone look at your front door and double it. That's, that's your width. Mm -hmm. That's the width. And then uh, walk in your house about uh, three or four paces, and there you have it. There's the place you live. That's where your toilet is. That's, that's not one room. That's the room. That's the suite. That's the suite. Yeah. That's uh, two bunks and a toilet a and sink? some shelves. The sink is uh, integrated into the toilet, which is kind of uh, nice. Kind of nice. Yeah. So that's it. And uh, then I met a l bunch of nice guys who are all lifers, you know, because uh, the uh, wing we were in just had pretty much lifers. It's weird. I mean, I know everyone hates uh, criminals and everything, and I do too. And we hate, uh, you know, we, we hear about O.J., getting off and all this kind of stuff. But, man, let me tell you, for every one OJ, there's 10 billion dudes just rotting away in there without uh, any decent council representation. And I'm not saying they deserve to get out. I'm just saying it's weird when you're talking to a guy, and I'm talking to this one guy, 
He's, a, he's attractive. He's a good-looking guy. He's got a smile on his face. He's a sort of friendly, approachable-looking guy. He's a white guy. He's uh, not that that means he's a better guy, but I, there was a fair amount of white dudes in there, too, which was uh, something I wasn't prepared for. Good. Yeah, it was a nice... Yeah, it's good. It's delightful, Drew. There's a nice uh, mixture between the uh, colors in the but section always, I was you're in. You're always going off about those mass murderers and what nice guys they were. Yep, this guy, but this guy had a genuine, friendly sort of demeanor. And I don't mean overly, oh, not, let, me, let me get that seat for you. Listen. It's sort of laid back. His face, if you looked at his face, if you looked at his smile, if you looked at his eyes, he seemed like a very relaxed, very friendly guy. But listen, I said, the guy was playing the guitar. I said, geez, you play that thing pretty well. Did you, were you playing it before you came in? He said, no, no. I said, wow, you, you do pretty good on that guitar. He said, well, I've been in for 15 years. I said, I'm looking at the guy. He looks like uh, phone screener Brian. I'm like, 15? How could you be in for 15 years when you're, you know, 22, you know? Yeah. I said, no, I'm, I'm 32, and uh, I, uh, I came in when I was 17. And I said, wow, seven, 10, 15 already, yeah. I said, well, when are you uh, in parole? When are you getting out? Never. And I was like, yeah, but what about parole? No. Well, do Life you want him, him, do you want him to get married? Do you want him to have... Uh relations and all that stuff you scream about every night no but the guys who got in at 17 i'll take a look at them 15 and a lot of guys get in you know they're they're uh, 30 and they do seven years or whatever and they end up getting out you know i mean this guy did this guy obviously killed somebody mm -hmm. i don't know what he did i know when he did it he was probably 16 and a half you know high running around with some gang or something or doing god knows what i don't know I don't know what the deal is. I know if he had probably better representation, he'd come up for parole at some point and do something. This guy's playing the guitar and he's painting. <laughs> just look at this guy who's uh, quite a few few years younger than I am. And he's looking at me and saying, I'm never, never, never. And it's, uh, it's eerie. I mean, he, didn't, he wasn't complaining about it. He just seemed soft-spoken, seemed kind of friendly, seemed like spent more years in than he had out at that point. But I talked to like 10 guys who were relatively young, who were working in the art shop, making beautiful paintings, doing this, doing that, sort of going about their day. And each time I said, you know, well, what's it look like? When are you, when are you getting out? When are you? Never. I mean, no possibility of parole and no nothing. Life. And it was like, I was like, wow, I got to, all right, well, I got to go. <laughs> but it was weird. It's weird looking at a young guy with that uh, never getting out thing, especially when he looks like, uh, you know, some guy was on uh, your Pop Warner football team or some, or some guy you went to high school with. But that is the difficult thing about sociopaths. They make you feel great. Yeah, and I'm, I'm with you on that, Drew, and I don't want to offend the guy just because I met him once, but I'm not so sure a guy who stabs uh, some uh, guy, someone who owns a liquor store or his girlfriend's uh, lover or something like that at 16 and a half is a sociopath. That, Probably, yeah, but, but I don't know. That's not what this guy did. No way. No way. Well, he didn't go on a, he didn't go on a, a tri-state killing spree at 16 and a half. You don't know? Well, see, here's the thing. Here's the one thing I did realize, Drew. And look, far be it for me to uh, defend these guys, but it's easy, it's easy to sit back and just go, these guys must have done multiple, multiple horrible, horrible things in order to be here. And uh, partially and partly, and maybe more than uh, partly, that's true. But a lot of it, too, is just zero representation. Uh, if these guys had money, like uh, a lot of more famous people we know who beat things like this, I'm not saying it's a good thing that everyone should throw money at something and get out of it. But you realize these guys just got shoved into the system, and that's let's, it. Let's say O.J. had no representation, and he right. was convicted flat out. What do you think would have happened to him? He'd, uh, he'd be a lifer. No. You don't think so? Oh, no, no. Why not? He had no representation? Mm -hmm. What do you mean? What would he we do? Gotta do uh, maybe I, we have some attorney call in and ring in on this. Right. What do you got to do? My understanding is you have to do heinous, premeditated, you know, repeat, you know, awful things. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's, uh, I'd like to look into that. So uh, somebody might know. I doubt that's anyone in our audience. Yeah, but if you do, I'll be curious about it. And the thing that's interesting about it to me is, is I think it varies quite a bit from time to time, from who's the governor to who's, you know, Republican, Democrat, hmm. what the basic sentiment of the time is. That's interesting. And who you got and what you did. I mean, it's a lot of it is fairly, I don't mean random, you got to do something bad to get there. Mm -hmm. But then after that point, 
it could range hmm. quite a bit. That's interesting. And that's the thing that I guess that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Some people kill people. They do six and a half years and they're out on parole. And some people do p kill somebody in rotten prison for the rest of their lives. And I don't know that there's that much difference between what they did. Okay. That's the part I'm interested in finding out about. Rick? Yes. Hello. You're 27? Yes, I am. What's up? Um, well, I was just curious. Actually, this question is for Dr. Drew. Um about uh, hanging weights from your penis to enlarge it, if it can do any, like, uh, damage to the uh, blood sacs that actually, you know, fill up when the yeah. penis gets erect. I would imagine it could. It could make them not work so well. You can pull your damn penis off, put enough weight on there. Well, it's important to start with a heavier weight and do, sh and do less reps, I believe, yeah. through to build initial bulk. <laughs> right. Because you don't need that much endurance in your penis. I think that's your ass. Right. Am I right, Drew? Yeah, I'm, okay. I'm with you. Uh, now, the danger really is the weight slipping off and landing on your foot. I keep well, thinking that these guys that are doing the hanging weight thing, is their, their penis is going to look like an elephant trunk. <laughs> that it really won't change the cavernous bodies that swell with blood, but it'll, all the skin and stuff will hang off the tip. Well, you know, I did see a guy, I, I, I did interview a guy. This man show, I'll tell you, really makes you a well-rounded individual when you're not doing time in uh, maximum security prisons. You're interviewing guys who put weights on their dork. But, uh... The uh, the weights apparently uh, do do something, but it's not much, and it's it's really here's what it is, it's it's like it's like you got a piece of candy, you got a piece of taffy, and you want it to appear bigger, so you stretch it out a little more. No more taffy, mm -hmm. little different shape, mm -hmm. little longer, but it's a little thinner too. Mm -hmm. You know, what I mean, just leave your taffy alone. Stop pulling you, your taffy. All I know is that guys are really truly practical about the size of their penis have significant self worth issues. They're not. They're, and usually it revolves around their job, right? They, they're something they're not doing so well in life. There, so all right. Get on it. So yeah, work work on your career. And uh, I wish I had a name for a penis that sounded that rhymed with career, Drew. Mm -hmm. Be really smart, but you know what I'm what? saying. I'm saying work on your career. Oh, and, not your. I see. <sighs> okay. Yes, yeah, you'd be nice, <laughs> Mike. Yeah. Hold on. Work on your job, not your knob. Okay. Okay. We'll clean that up in in uh, post. Mike, what's up? Hi. Uh, um, I've been. I'm 14, and uh, my mom's been taking a pill called Somas. Mm-hmm. And like, I'll be. I'll just be sitting there, and like, <clears throat> she'll be. She'll be really tired, and her eyes will get really droopy and stuff. Right. And then like, and then like, my puppy will come outside, and she'll like, so, she'll like start playing with the puppy and being all hyperactive and like running around with the puppy and stuff. And then like, the puppy will sit down, and she'll come over and sit down by me, and like. She'll sit down and I'll be like, so what's going on, Mom? She'll be like, hey, me alone, I'm tired. Oh, boy. And she'll just, like, sit there and, like... Is she taking to... Vicodin also or just the Soma? Uh, all I know of is the Soma. How much is she taking, do you know? Uh-uh. I just it's... asked her, like, what, what's going on? Like, why is she taking it? And she said, just leave me alone. It's relieving my stress. Well, is that a sleeping pill, Drew? It's a muscle relaxant, and uh, it's something that's prescribed a lot for back pain and headaches and neck pain, this sort of thing. I, interestingly, have seen just a run on soma addiction lately. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know why that's... I have to get on board with that. What do you got? It is an exceedingly difficult drug to come off of. Why? Uh, there's a whole syndrome I've seen now where people get... Something called an akathisia, where they get so agitated they can't sit still. It's like there's a motor going, and it's a very uncomfortable agitation. At the same time, they get... Have you ever heard of restless leg syndrome? Yeah. Uh, they, they get kind of their legs kind of uncomfortable, and they want to move them. Well, they get that in their upper extremities. Bad times. And it's, and it's constant. It's painful, and it's miserable, and it goes on for weeks. All right. So now that you're scared the crap out of young Mike, well, what should he do? I, I, I could not detox a soma patient outside a hospital so she really needs to look into a chemical well how cancer. long has she been on it uh, i'd say probably about four weeks i don't know hmm well that's, that's probably what i've known of it for well i i mean it, mike here's a here's a question how was she before the soma she just like i mean she'd come home from work and she'd be stressed out and take off her shoes you know i'm like but other than that she she was pretty okay like we could we could, like, float the river or something on a Saturday if she wanted to, and now she's just like, uh, was she Was she drinking a fair amount before? Um, not really. Hey, Mike? Yeah? Uh, you know, I appreciate your concern for your mom, and I bet she will, too, at some point. Maybe not now. But it sounds, at least thus far, like your mom had a little problem with some anxiety. She got herself some medication. She's uh, a tired person, maybe has some troubles. You can't get so wrapped up in it. Mm. 
I mean, I don't know. I don't think he's going to detox his mom right now. He can. You can say to her, "Hey, yeah. this thing makes you, you know, makes your mood this way." It's scaring me. You need to do something about this, or call her doctor if you can. If you know it's prescribed, well, call him or her. Or she's just taking it when she comes home from work at night to go to bed or mellow out or whatever. How often are you supposed to take it? Rarely. Oh, rarely? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's something when you really have a oh. bad muscle spasm kind of thing. She's taking it regularly to the point that she's, oh. it's affecting her I parenting. I thought she took it every night. And addiction, well, you could for a couple of days, even a week, but not beyond that. And her and addiction is defined by its consequences, and it's affecting her ability to be a competent parent. And that's... All right, that's, so listen, tell her, but don't freak on her. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Mike, 14, it's time to start running with your friends, thinking about chicks, and uh, trying to make stuff into bombs. Trying try to get away from mom. Trying to get away from mom. That's, that's, that's the point. Well, that's, it's sad. Mike's the caretaker of mom at 14. It's bad. That's, 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 the, bad. That, that's my message, yeah. is don't be that. Dane? Yeah? You shouldn't be talking to your mom enough to know what kind of mood she's <laughs> in. That's my point at 14. <laughs> They, my mom could have died in her bedroom, been there for like eight years. I wouldn't have known it. I would have like tapped on the door, Mom. She didn't yell out. You're sleeping? Freak, Freak out. out. <laughs> I guess you're sleeping, Mom. Uh, I'm going to take the change off the counter. I'm going over to Chris's house. We'll be back in a couple of days. Fast forward four years, Mom. Are you napping? Did you fart in there, Mom? It smells like rotting flesh. Where's that pot smell? All right. Well, anyway, I'm going out. Dane? Yeah? 15. What's up? Okay. I've been in a relationship for about two years. And she told me that um, she's been having it like she's been cheating on me with this guy that I know from work. And it's been going on for about a week. And I want to know what I should do about it because I, I have feelings for her, though. She's your girlfriend for two years. Yes. Is that how she would describe this relationship? Yes, yes. Yes, and, yes. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And is she? what made her tell you about this cheating? I, she said she felt bad and so... Is she mm -hmm. wanting to break up? No, she's, she said she's sorry and stuff, but I don't know what I should do. Does she want to keep seeing this other guy? I don't know. She just said that I've been having an affair and I feel bad about it and I want to come An affair you. at 15. Sounds kind of... Oh. <laughs> 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 yes. Um, yes. She, uh, t she, she, she called it an affair? Yes. Wow. Jesus, kids are growing up. I would have been like, I'm uh, put my dingling oh, no. in this other chick's uh, hoo ha, uh, and it feels good. <laughs> that would have been like at 15. Can I still put my dingling in your hoo ha, or could you touch it? Touch it now. <laughs> that would have been me at 15. Hey, uh, Dane. Yeah. Uh, maybe she wants out of the relationship. How long has she been uh, carrying on with this other guy? Do you know? For about a week. For about a week. And uh, what has she been doing with this guy? She said she had sex with him, and oh yeah, boy, she's always around with. He's she's always around him, not me. And so, hold on a second, young Dane. See, either this is bogus, or Dane's n not the boyfriend. Well, it's always a little curious to me when somebody says. I have this long-standing relationship, you know, a couple of years with this person, and they're, you know, they're carrying on with this other person, and I found out about it, and they told me about it, and it's like, so what happened? Are they still going to see the person? Well, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah. Now, listen, when you're in a relationship that you care about that's been going on for a few years, which at 15 is like into entire puberty, by the way, and you find out that this person's been screwing around behind your back. It's a thousand pardons and no, 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 and it'll never happen again, and I'm not even going to talk to the person. Not, or or it's uh, we'll see. neither one of us want to talk about what the inevitable is here. She doesn't want to piss, you know, make right. her upset, and he doesn't want to Dane. Know. Yeah? She's done with this relationship. And, like, lately I've... Dane, shut up. She's done. I know, but... It's I have... over. Can yeah. I have one more thing? No. It's over. Do you hear me? Yes. All right. You have to accept that. That's good. She's a troubled person. Lately, I... <laughs> what do you think he's got to say? Mason Jordan. Something Mason. Mason. Go ahead, Dane. Go ahead, Dane. Lately, I've been on Ritalin. Oh. In a Mason jar? No, I've been on Ritalin. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. And I was wondering what, like, because I go off and on on them. Well, who... I was wondering what could happen to me. If you mean you're abusing Ritalin? You're finding somebody else's drugs no, and using No, I'm on them because I have ADD. And why would you go off it? Because it's like in the summer, and like I, I still take them off and on. Who told you to take it off and on? 
The doctor? No. The... They told you to take it off and on? Take it as you please? Pardon? They told you to take it as you please? No. <laughs> Here's how it was. He told them to take it often. Yeah. On every day. Yeah, hear it off and on. <laughs> Dane. Yes? Okay. Go, you got to go back and talk to your doctor. That is not a medicine. Thing worked out. Yeah, it's not a... My, no, he didn't say, the doctor didn't say that my grandma, so she says she, like, really screwed up, and she says, oh, it's okay if you go off and off. No, it is not okay. okay. It is not okay. what could happen. Dane, it your grandmother not. screwed up. Don't listen to her. It is not okay to go off and on. It's okay to go off it if you talk to the doctor about it, and it's also, if you're going to take it, you got to take it properly. Good times. <sighs> All right, so, Dane. Go to the doctor, talk about the Ritalin. Get rid of this girl. Get rid of this chick who's having sex with somebody else after a two-year relationship, yeah, and she's probably tough. like 14, and it's a mess. Jordan? Yeah. You're 18. Yeah. What's up? Um, well, I was just wondering if guys usually like bigger nipples on girls or littler ones. What the? <laughs> well, now, I have an opinion on this, but what, what part of the nipple, the actual nipple or the uh, part around the nipple? Like the part around it. Well, part around. That's Adam's part. That's the, Adam, the, the Corolla zone. That's right. The uh, Corolliola. The Corolliola. That's right. <laughs> we call that. Write that down here. Uh, I, like, uh, I like the big areola myself. Uh-huh. That's me. Okay. I'm an areola man. Okay. They're, they're only areolite, I believe they're called. Yes. Drew over here is an ass man. You, you, know, uh, you know how I know that? How? Because uh, each time someone brings up his name, they say, that Drew... He's an ass, man. <laughs> no talent, ass yeah. clown. <laughs> that was a singer, man. <laughs> Woo! All night, man. It's going to keep coming, too. I hope not. Did you hear that ass man one, Jordan? Yeah. So, yeah, Jordan, you good, feel right? better? Adam is in your camp. Well, now, here's, here's the deal, though, okay. I realize. You say, or I say, I like the big areola, yeah. but then you picture it on a small chest. And you realize, well, well no, I wait have a minute. Like, um, like a C, like almost D. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And they're about like maybe an inch and a half to two inches, like in diameter, I guess you could say. Well, well now, inch and a half to two. That's proportional. Yeah. yeah. That's oh, a, is it? Yeah. Because well, do I you, feel like insecure about it. Well, hold on. Do you have any way of measuring them? Oh, I did while I was on hold. Oh, you did? <laughs> yeah. What'd you measure them with? A ruler. A ruler? Yeah. Hmm. And you're saying an uh, inch and a half? To two. To two. Basically two. Really like this, right? So you're saying it's basically two. Yes. It's kind of hard to tell because they don't, it's not, they're not like a drawing where you draw a circle. They, they start to, they sort of blend. bleed. Yeah. They blend a little bit. But show that's only. Show me two inch diameter circle. That's only good for, for an eighth of an inch. That's two inches? No. No. No, I just drew a circle. I was just trying to prompt myself. Uh... Yeah. yeah, that's two inches. It's not like they're abnormally large, but so that's it's about like that. two like two inches is uh, is uh, well bottled water. The bottom of like a small container of bottled water is probably uh, it's two and a quarter. Really, it's a little bit bigger than two inches. Like, yeah? what do you guys think if they see like a girl with big nipples? The game on. Oh, okay. That's what I think. All right. Yeah, that's good. Okay. There's well, no, nothing wrong with that. Okay, okay. don't you ever, okay. ever. Hang your head in shame, young lady. Okay, well, thank you very much. All right? All you right. You feel good about yourself. I, I do. And, and, you know, here's the thing. Guys really, uh, maybe there's like three guys that are out there effing it up for the rest of us. I've never really heard any guys. Complaining? I've never really heard any complaints. Have no, you? No. I mean, most guys have uh, been with girls, all shapes and sizes in that department. They seem to enjoy each one for kind of what, what they are. Mm hmm and uh, the variety that is uh, breasts. Mm -hmm. And guys have their own sort of preferences, but it's never enough to really make a make or break a deal. Yes? So, some guys are certain range that but, they have but there's to a hand there's a handful of troublemakers yes. that screw it up for everybody yes, is basically yes. what i'm saying yes. and get chicks to freak out over everything mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. nice uh, nice round areola is uh, good times and uh, within proportion on the breasts right good times good times all right <laughs> i for the record, like a little bit bigger than uh, is necessary. In everything. Yeah. Abundanza. That's my rallying call. Yeah. All right, we'll take ourselves a little break. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm uh, Adam Carolla. Carolla. 
And that's Dr. Drew over there. Yeah. one eight hundred L O V E one nine one. Let me tell you a little bit uh, more about the uh, prison life here, Drew. Yeah. Sat down and ate with the prisoners. Mm -hmm. Food, uh, not delightful, by the way. Mm. A little uh, turkey, a little mashed potatoes, you know. Not uh, not great fare mm -hmm. over there. Awful? But, yeah. I'd, awful. Say, I'd say awful. Yeah. yeah. You'll be glad to know. I mean, all, all the folks uh, like myself who, you know, sit around and say, uh, oh, those guys over there dining on fine cuisine and watching satellite TV all day on the uh, taxpayer's dollar. Yeah. Uh, they've cleaned up a fair amount of that. Yeah. The uh, cells are small, and the food is bad. Huh. And uh, the food, uh, the thing that was interesting, the thing that Jimmy and I couldn't figure out is they give you that big tray. It's like the Army, and they, you know, put the, put the slop in there. Yeah. And uh, you got your little cup of sherbet, your little mashed potatoes, a little turkey, a little salad. But then a huge, big opening in the tray. I mean, something that was like a you know decent-sized soup bowl filled with gravy. Oh. Now, the gravy was sort of green-colored. It was more green than it was brown. And it was sort of congealed, but yet sort of clear. It had a sort of a gelatin sort of thing to it. Oh. And little solid pieces in it. And it was deep. And Jimmy and I couldn't get over the gravy because there was a fairly small piece of turkey... And you think, okay, turkey and gravy, mm. but a uh, ketchup packet of brown gravy spurted over that small piece of uh, of turkey would have sufficed. This was a whole big, like, bowl of horrible-looking gravy. And I looked at it, and Jimmy looked at it, and I think I probably put my finger in it and tasted it. It was bad. And uh. Everyone in the whole prison just sort of looked at it, and I asked a few people, like, what's with the gravy? I mean, since when do you get like a big bowl of gravy? And since when is this gravy? This ain't gravy. Yeah. Sort of like soup meets jello, but yeah, yeah. with unknown stuff in it. Oof. And uh, everyone didn't seem to know. They were like, I don't know. I don't eat it. I don't want it. I don't know, whatever. And I said to Jimmy, well, what is it with this gravy? And then I thought, you know what it is? This is to let people know they're in prison. Yeah. You know what I mean? You got to have that bowl of crappy whatever that just looks like hell. Right. That's a bad off green color that there's way too much of and that no one will eat. Right. Because if, if you just put your plate down there and devour everything that's in front of you, that ain't prison. It, I, I imagine it's this way in the Army, too. There's always got to be something on the side, something. To remind you. Well, like when you riot, that's what you throw. Yeah. The gravy. Yeah. But. They, they must have went through 750 gallons of gravy that day. And I'd say uh, maybe a uh, hummingbird's belly worth was actually consumed. Nobody ate it. <laughs> Why the gravy? You know, maybe it's, maybe it's the prison equivalent of parsley. I think, I think you're on to something yeah. there, Drew. I think, I think parsley, yeah, I think yeah. gravy is the prison yeah. parsley. Yeah. yeah. Tom? You're uh, you're 15. It's how it's how they keep it real. <laughs> Tom. Yeah. What's up? Hey, what's going on? Yeah. Okay. First of all, Adam, I'd like to tell you that first of all, okay, you are a god. Thank you, buddy. And you should definitely uh, start your own religion. Thank you. First hey. of all, good. Okay. Yeah. It's consistent. <gasps> yeah. Well, I think the prison would be a good place to get that started. <laughs> Oh, man, I got to tell you, they had American Indians there that had their own little worship place, but it was covered with Constantine wire and fencing, and it was about the size of uh, your porch, you know. Uh, oh, there's a lot of weird stuff going on in that prison, man. All right, I'm sorry. Okay, so uh, the call I told the screener, that, that's just a fake question. All right, all right, good. Talk more about prison. <laughs> met a guy, met a guy in there, killed a guy with his hook. His arm hook? Oh, yeah. That's nice. How do I, you do it? Well, eye, neck. The whole thing about the detail part of this stuff, Drew, is yeah. uh, when you're actually just sitting with these guys <laughs> and there's nobody around, really. You don't tend. There's two things you do. A, you don't sweat the details as much, and B, you tend to do a little more head nodding and a little less. Oh, wait a minute! Wait a minute! No, you're telling me you slipped and the hook went in your old lady's neck. Give me a break. You do less of that and a little more. Wow, that's a bad break. Bad break. <laughs> bad break. <laughs> Guy sitting there, uh, 50 years old, uh, not morbidly obese, but getting close to it. Big, thick Coke bottle glasses. Again, white dude, yeah. but, like sort of Birdman of Alcatraz, but fat kind of guy. Yeah. With the arm cut off uh, about halfway up the uh, upper arm. Mm -hmm. A good four or five inches from the elbow, just a nub there. And I'm looking at it, and he's looking at me, and when we asked him... Uh, what he's in for, I mean, said uh, basically the 
hook on the uh, prosthetic arm. You remember the old style arm mm -hmm. that had the nice uh, handy hook on it? Uh, that uh, that was the weapon that uh, got him in. So uh, I want to know where the arm was now. It's in the Smithsonian, apparently. No, not with him. Doesn't like it. It was uh, lovely to watch the uh, morbidly obese guy with the uh, stump for a uh, right arm use uh, the nub of the right arm to hold, to uh, steady the sherbet container so that he could pop the cap off the top of it with a good hand. You, you're just a lightweight. <laughs> that was you're delightful. A, you're a television pussy. <laughs> you pansy. Pansy, that's right. You are. You that live in a, your little floofy world of that's TV right. and radio. My little ivory real, cable Real star. people, limbs removed, living in depravity. Killing that's, people that's with hooks. People. That's, what, that's what humans are about. Oh. I think they have to live nicely in their Hollywood hills. Yeah, I'll tell you. Literally, millionaire. <laughs> Amy? Why? Amy, you're Hi. 17. Hi. What's up? Um, I've been into S&M since I was, like, really little. Mm -hmm. And I'm 22. How, how old? Like, six. Oh, no, come on. What, what happened to you? I was raped. When you were how old? Seven. Oh, God. By my stepfather. Very nice. I would, if you were into S&M by the time you were six, you must have been sort of physically abused before that, too. Yeah. Um, he used to duct tape me down to chairs make me watch bondage porn. Oh, my God. Good time. Now, now. By the way, separate part of the prison for those guys. <laughs> really? Yes, Is he indeed. in prison now? I love you so much, Adam. You uh, should marry me. Is All he, right. Well, is he in prison now, Amy? Um, it was a hung jury. They didn't believe me. And my mom testified against me. Your mom testified against you saying what? You said I was a liar and all this crap and it never happened. Oh, my God. Where, uh, where would you get it? You know, you just... That's six. Well, how long, how long ago was the uh, trial? When I was like eight. Oh, my God. Interesting. All right, so your stepmom and, I mean, your dad and your, I'm sorry, your stepdad and your mom still together? No. Why did she they, Yeah. She got sober and broke up with him. All right. Sober from what? Speed. Okay. Oh, that's a, that's a uh, beautiful beautiful <sighs> imagery when you close your eyes and picture those two shacked up. And poor Amy in the middle of one. Yeah. And what's your mom say now? Um, she still doesn't believe me. Really? Even though she's sober now, huh? Yeah. You think that part would come around? And did he rape you more than once? Yeah. How's her sobriety? Oh, she's eight years clean. Doesn't take anything? No, she just smokes cigarettes. And doesn't believe you? No. Nope. Hey, when's the last time you spoke to her about it? <laughs> when I was like 13. So you haven't spoken to her about it in many years? I don't really like to talk to her about it. All right. Well, that's why I was probing about her sobriety and her lack of acceptance. Because it, mm. sobriety is about honesty and about dealing with these things. And if she's not willing to or not accepting or in denial still... It's hard to imagine that she would maintain her sobriety. But I bet if you brought it up now, she'd be able to talk about it. I, I don't know that you should or that it would do anything for you, though. No, it would just make more problems in the house. Yeah, All right, so you're living with her now? Yeah. Oh, that's got to be comfortable. It is. You should try it. <laughs> <laughs> I did until I was like 19, then I got the <laughs> AF out of there. Yeah. Okay, so uh, it says up on the screen you're two months pregnant. 22 weeks. And um, Is that four years? What? How many years is that? 22 weeks. Oh. All How right. many years is that? So she's almost know. there. She's 10 oh, weeks away from that. Oh, okay. So now you got to have the child, right? Yeah. But I was wondering, like, what can't I do when I'm pregnant that's bondagey? Well, cat of nine tails would be out, <laughs> uh, gimp ball, uh, padded cuffs, uh, being hung by your feet, <laughs> that kind of stuff. I, I'm guessing the rack. Through it. You can't do anything aggressive. Because I had sex a couple days ago and I was being choked. Mm hmm And um, he wasn't anywhere near my stomach because he knows I'm pregnant. And Sir Walter Raleigh again. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, he says chivalry's dead. Remember, remember, your infant gets the same oxygen that you get. Oh, really? Fascinating. Right. Or don't get. I didn't know that, no. <laughs> well, you got to figure if you stop breathing, eventually the uh, child's going to stop. Where right? do you think the baby's oxygenated from? Well, they got that umbilical cord. Huh? Yeah, from, <laughs> from your lungs and your blood. Well, listen, not, not, everyone's a, not everyone's a physician, Drew. You're a physician. You have to just lighten up, buddy. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> 
Amy? Uh, no, but I was going to have a threesome this weekend with two of my guy friends. Uh-huh. And we're all into bondage, and they were, like, going to handcuff me up and whip me. Is whipping bad? Hold on a second. Remember, tied up duct tape at age six to watch porn. porn. That's an M porn. Yeah, it's tough because I would. This would sound. This would be bogus. Oh no, this is real. If it if it wasn't, she had all the right groundwork wasn't laid, and she gives you that right feeling too. Yeah, although, really, you really want to know if whipping is bad. And by the way, I'd like to meet the breed of cat that takes a seventeen-year-old chick who's visibly pregnant and uh, puts the uh, leather hood on her, gives her a nice beating with a with a riding crop. What what is what what is she digging for? What is she looking for? Okay. Oh, by the way, Crank Yankers on everybody uh, <laughs> as we speak. Comedy Central, a delightful show. New episode. Amy. Yeah. What do you need to know from us? Um, what would hurt the baby if okay, all of this? Uh, well, remember, remember. Here's where this is not bogus. She did. She is. What word can I use that isn't too nuts? disparaging? Well, she has enough lack of insight as to not understand that her breathing is necessary for the child's uh, okay. oxygen Well, supply. I just learned that, too. Amy? Yeah? What are you going to do with this child uh, after it's born? Graze it? No. 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 I wouldn't we'll trust you, you with a pot plant. I would give her the green light on the S&M. <laughs> I think uh, if, you need to give this kid away. Yes, if you gave it up for adoption. I'd give, the, I'd give a green light on everything. The sooner you get really that child out of her, the better. L listen, you, if you took this kid... Put it in a bassinet and tied it to a weather balloon and let it go. <laughs> it would be in much better shape than... Odds better. Being better raised, odds, yeah. You're raising this kid. Why? Because you are a mess. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> a hey, mess. Come on, you know that. You are a mess. And that's all right. I mean, you're 17, and your stepdad did all kinds of horrible things to you, and you're supposed to be a mess. And that's fine, <laughs> but you can't mess somebody else up. So I want you to give this kid up for adoption. Uh-uh. Yeah. I, I know you're a mess and you're clinging to the kid, but that that's not right. The kid is not there for you. You need to be able to be there for that person, separate human being that needs a parent. And if you can't, if you're not up to that, or if you need someone to love you or be there for you, that's not a parent. And who are these guys, by the way, who want to uh, give you the threesome? Two of my guy friends. How old are they? Um, 28 and 30. Right, and uh, we really should report these. You're guys. 17. Yeah, these guys are these guys are endangering the life of your child and raping you. These are criminals. These guys. You understand that? These aren't your friends. These are horrible, horrible guys. Probably working in the construction field. They're around metal. Actually, one me? of them just got out of prison. Mm. Well, there you go. Who <laughs> said they're criminals? Yeah. Well, I'm all wrong about him then. <laughs> uh, listen, well, please, please, don't don't screw your life up. Don't screw the kid's life up. Come on, you understand. Look, you had horrible things done to you. Is that that's it? That's the rest of your life now? You let a bunch of old guys who just got out of prison do horrible things to you for the rest of your life? You got to stop. You give this goddamn kid up for adoption. Do you understand me? Okay. And you don't do anything in the meantime that could jeopardize the child's health. Right. No, no bondage with uh, will be over. with uh, criminals. Do you understand? Okay. I uh, stop it. Okay. You get that. Uh, you get that cable, and you sit in front of the TV set for a change, like I do. You wait to die. All right. Thirty-year-old guy. Uh, imagine the, the pitch from one guy to the other. Hey, Stu. Yeah. What's up, Kurt? Let's go over to see Amy tonight. Amy, she's pregnant. Yeah, you see this hood? She loves this stuff. All right. Well, let's see. Uh, you choke her, and uh, I'll beat her with this uh, riding crop, and uh, we'll both get off. All right? That's great. When's she going to be 18? Eight, well, I don't know. She's eight months pregnant. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's a factor. She, she must be over 18 then. Wait right? a minute. You don't have the kid on your birthday, do you? Well, I guess oh, you I would. I can't figure it out. I don't know. Well, it's a kid's birthday. Oh, man, you're blowing my mind. All right. Let's take a little break. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. Loveline. I'm uh, Adam. That's Doc Drew. Phone number 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. Let's get back to them phones, Sandra. What mm -hmm. you say now? Rick? Yes. 
Yes, it'd be me. You uh, work at a prison, do you, Rick? Yes, I do. I work at Corcoran State Prison, the home of Charlie Manson. Ooh, oh, nice. I thought he was at San Quentin. No, he is not at San Quentin. He is uh, right here in the heart of California. When did they move him? How many years ago? Uh, they moved Charlie from time to time. They, they, uh, he freaks out, and they move him, and they bring him back. What does he do when he, he freaks out? Uh, he's just, he, you know, acts like Charlie. He's a, just your basic knucklehead. So, uh, you, Adam, I want to say uh, you're a god, and Drew, you. you're an ass, man. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> but no, well, why does Charlie act like a, a freak out? What do you mean by that? What does he do? Uh, he just does the typical Charlie Manson thing. That's what we kind of call it around we, here. We don't know what that is. Oh, though. I know what it is. He likes to uh, he likes to smear his own feces on the wall. Yeah. And uh, sometimes he'll even eat it. Yeah. That's... So, uh, but that's you know that, that's a pretty typical thing that happens in a in a prison. Um, and uh, Adam, you probably saw uh, being in a prison that there's uh, several different types of prison gangs, and uh, you can uh, you can count on some of the gangs are the ones that are the bigger crap eaters. So. Really. Uh, yeah, and uh, you usually can count on uh, a lot of the white guys. So, eating the crab? Um, depending on what type of program they're in. Um, well, yeah, depending. listen, I'm uh, Rick. I'm with you, by the way, in that the the brothers, they're not into all that. They, their life is crappy enough. They've eaten enough crap in their life, not literally, but you know what I'm saying. You, like you go to an S and M parlor. You don't see black guys hanging out there. Black guy wants to nail a hot young blonde chick. He doesn't want some fat chick in her 40s to beat the crap out of him. That's his life, you understand? He don't need to pay for it. No. What's going on around there, Rick? Well, uh, I just, uh, I, you know, you were talking about guys that you look at them and you think of, you think of guys that uh, you would normally just see on the street. They look like a normal, everyday guy. And then you come to find out that these guys are, you know, they've committed multiple murders, um, different types of, you know, heinous acts. I'll, and, t uh, I'll tell you, yeah. It, 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 it's, uh, it's absolutely true. And thanks uh, for the call, Rick. Why does he scare me? Because <laughs> there's guys screaming in the background. I hope those are inmates. No, he, he, that, well, he to. called you an ass man, too. But no. man, not an ass man, an, an ass, ass man. man. But here's, here's the thing. Every single guy, not every single guy I saw, but every single guy I had a conversation with, sort of quiet, laid back, friendly, you realize you can't tell from anybody. Y you know what I mean? You want to hear some more stories from him like that? I don't... Uh, oh, he's got I, I don't completely... I'm not completely sure... He was 100% legitimate. I don't mean he was bogus. I just mean there's a lot going on in the background. I thought he was in the prison. Nah, he was? Yeah. Seemed, uh, I was in the prison today. There wasn't that much yelling going oh, on in the yeah, background, yeah, but yeah. maybe that was it. Well, anyway, yes, every murderer I met and spoke to today looked fairly subdued. Mm -hmm. Some guys, though, you know, covered with the uh, swastika tattoos and stuff, you got the feeling that, uh, yeah, maybe these guys could uh, put a shiv in you if push came to shove. But then there are other guys just as friendly. As, it actually mellows you out. Actually, here's something that's interesting, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, scary people are more mellow when they're mellow. Uh, well, here's, no, here's, here's what the piece you're missing. Violent people. I really appreciate it. That, that people that feel out of control and violent... Don't like feeling that way, and when you put them in a highly contained environment, they feel better. Yes. They get mellow, but they, here they get yes. super mellow sometimes. Then. Here's what I here's what I mean. I have uh, spent uh, half my lifetime hanging around with uh, different with boxers, mm -hmm. and uh, not I didn't move into a gym, but I, I've known quite a few boxers. They're always super mellow guys, super mellow. Yeah. They talk a little slow. They're very relaxed. Mm. And they look in the eye and they go, how are you doing? Well, no, and they're they polite. Think, yeah, yeah. And then they beat the crap out of you. People actually think that is because when they are beaten as children themselves, it induces a parasympathetic tone of dissociation. So the sympathetic fight or flight response sort of passed them long ago. They've, they're now in sort of the preparatory phase for the inevitable, some you know, yeah. huge assault. And when they do get angry, they get violent. Yeah. Well, not all, not all the boxers were beaten, mm, though. But, it's just, mm, but people that have that parasympathetic <laughs> thing. Mm. I'm just saying, guys guys who do a lot of ass-kicking are too mellow but in real not, life. My point, is, my point is not from the kicking of ass. It's no. That's the person that chooses to do the kicking of ass is the one that yeah. has that parasympathetic time. Yeah. 
Yeah. And in movies, when they show guys, the mean guys all hyped out all the time, no. it's, it's not, that's not what they are. Mm -mm. They're very mellow, and then they flip a switch, and they kill you. They, they can't regulate. That's the problem. It just explodes. Joe? You're Hello? 14? Joe? I think he hung up. He's been waiting 85 minutes, then he just says hello and hangs up? Well, we, I talked to him for uh, 13 seconds. I mean, uh, seems like enough, right? I guess so. It was enough for him. Well, I said hi to him. Uh, like you said, it was enough for him. Yeah. Natalie? Yeah? Yeah, you're 19. What's up? Um, well, um, I hear, like, these voices in my head, and it's, like, talking about me, and, like, it's other people talking to me. You're fat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, and I'm not fat. Anything else happening? Do any drugs or anything? Um, I was smoking marijuana. But you're not doing speed or cocaine? No. <laughs> All right. All right. You, have you been very, very depressed lately? Um, yeah, like, um, I think I have been, like, my whole life, but... All right. Have you talked to your do a doctor about these symptoms? Yeah, they gave me medication. Okay, but you told them about the, the hallucinations, the auditory hallucinations? Yeah. Okay, it's just, it's all right, it's part of the psychiatric syndrome you're dealing with. A lot of different psychiatric problems cause that. Medication helps it completely. All right, so listen to your doctor. Uh, yeah. And take your medication, and we'll be back. Hey, everybody. Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Unwritten law coming up a little later this week. And um, let's talk about Bobcat tomorrow. Huh? Is that for real? Bobcat Goldthwait, I don't know if he's no. showing up or not. Apparently no. not. No. Probably out of town. I work with him though. I don't I haven't seen him around in a while. That guy's got a good life. Really? Well he's got okay. a good life and a bad life. I mean he deserves it. He's a good guy. He's a smart guy. He's a delight. Mm -hmm. And a dear, dear, dear friend Bobcat is, but Bobcat goes out of town like on every Thursday and comes home on like every Monday and does stand up. Right. And he's out in, like, South Dakota right. playing uh, Bob's Yuck Shack and Yaki Axe. And he likes that, huh? No stand-up I know will admit to liking stand-up because I think they know that I label them as nuts. Although, you know, I, uh, I look askance at anyone who admits liking work of any form. Right. I right. look down on them for that. Right. Especially in front of other people, needing other people's approval for it. Right, oh, right. You're just, oh. Right, right. That's that's me. I don't I don't want people to hear what I have to say. But let me talk for a little while longer before we take some Just more listen call. to me. <laughs> just listen to me, man. So Bobcat never admits to like it, neither any stand ups, but on the other hand, you gotta work at some point. That's where his work's coming in right now. He makes uh, some decent money. And I'm sure if you took uh your, I mean, I, I guess what a lot of people think is, well the guy's a celebrity or whatever. Uh but eventually, you got to work, right? And if you ain't making, uh, if you ain't making hot to trot two, or uh, Scrooge two, or whatever, Police Academy, or what Police Academy fifty-seven, yeah. then you got to go to South Dakota, and go to the uh, Gaffaw factory, and make your uh, twenty-five hundred bucks, and come back home again. So uh, That's not a bad deal. Well, no, I mean here's the thing. Uh, it's it's. Uh, it ain't, uh, you know, it ain't making uh, forty million dollars a year as uh, the, the, one of the cast members of Friends, hmm. but uh, better than swinging a hammer. That's for damn sure. All right, Ooh, Drew. We lost one. Are you saying Bobcat's like one step above a, a, a construction worker? Is that what you're saying? No, 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 no. I'm saying better than swinging a hammer, meaning better than a regular job, better than everyone else. He's even though this is something that Adam disapproves of, and sounds awful. Pretty good deal. Yeah, but uh, listen, I, I could I could wax on forever, but w showbiz becomes like uh, blue collar and white collar at a certain point. I mean, what I mean is is people that work it, and people that don't work. In the real world, there's guys who get up and dig ditches every day and paint things and haul garbage, and then there are guys who uh, are executives or who invented something or who investment bankers and make a ton of money. In show business, there's that too. 
there's people who wrote some uh, idea for a game show and are just going to the mailbox, camera, cashing a check every day. And then there's guys who do stand-up, go on the road, do cruise ships, and do that kind of stuff. Yeah. All right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I'm saying Bobcat, yeah, one step ahead. I didn't make it seem like it was, what he was doing was better than swinging a hammer, did I? No. Danny? Yeah. Yeah, turn that radio down. All right. Thank you. But, uh, Bob, if you're listening, dear, dear friend, and I uh, hope to see you soon. No. Danny? Well, actually, this is his friend, Matt. This is Danny's friend. Question, uh, I thought it was Bobcat's friend. Yeah. That's, that's what <laughs> this is uh, Danny's friend, Matt. Yeah. All right. Let's go. Well, I have the que I have a question. Why do nice guys, you know, basically get crapped on by women? No, they don't. Well, there's a couple reasons. They're a little needy. Yeah. The, the, first of all, I, I thought about this the other day. You know, in w women and men in their like late teens and twenties could not be further apart in terms of their biology and their psychology. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. And around 18 to 22, a lot of women are l sort of trying to corral that alpha male type, that, that brooding, independent, um, testosteroneized guy that really sort of treats them like crap, trying to convert them into the nice guy. They, they haven't yet understood that, that, that they don't come in both forms. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's either the nice guy or the a-hole guy. You can't turn one into the other. And the a-hole guy really tends to be not available, even though the perception is that somehow he is truly available and, you know, sort of knows what he wants and is very independent and not very needy. And there's a whole other side of that, which is also completely detached emotionally. The nice guys, if they can also be available emotionally and seem sort of having their S together, mm -hmm. focused on their own S, not so needing a woman to make them complete kind of thing, and not um, interested in pleasing, yeah. they'll, be, they'll be fine. They'll be much better than anybody. Well... Let's face it. You, you, Drew, you tell me your opinion. What is the worst years to be a man? Under? You give me... No, give worst me years? Worst yes. years. Worst years. Give me seven years. Seven years? 15 to 22. No. 13 to 20. No. I say 18 to 25. You can... Because here's the thing. No, because you have a potential then. You, 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 your worst years were then. But that can actually yeah. be okay for some guys that time. No. No. Because when you're in high school, you're in your own little community, and you're actually, when you're 17, 18 year old in high school, you're older. I understand, but if you, if you are not in then, there is nothing you can do about it. While at 20 or 23, let's say, if you can do things to, for yourself and about yourself and your life yeah. to, to increase your number. All right, but I'm saying when you're 17, it's possible to date. 16 year olds mm -hmm. when you're when you're 19 you don't get to go out with 19 year olds anymore right that's the difference when you're in high school you get to go out with high school age girls mm -hmm. when you graduate high school you got a year maybe a year and a half where you can date some seniors in high school or something like that or if you're in college maybe you can do that but when you're 20 19 21 as a guy you have no money you have no direction and you can't date 19 year old or 20 year old chicks and you sure as hell ain't dating 25 year old chicks all right so let's let's agree on uh, 14 to 21 that's bad i listen i say 22 23 is uh, bad but, for a guy but at least the guy has the potential there's an opera, there's no potential before that okay starting to crawl out of the yeah. grave at uh, 22 some can, 23 some can emerge yeah all right I'll go go along with that. And here's the reason why um, I didn't even really count 16, 17 years old, because it's sort of a who cares. I mean, when I was in high school, I wasn't getting any tail. Right. I knew it. It wasn't that big a deal. I hung around with my buddies. It was okay. You know, I wasn't happy about the fact that I was not getting one ounce of vagina. But I was having a good time screwing around with my buddies anyway. It's tough when you're then out on your own and you're like 20 and you're drinking a few beers, and you ain't getting an ounce. That's tough. I mean, it is kicked in by then. Mm -hmm. And now look, when you're 16, 17 years old, getting a chick naked, that's a thrill. That, I mean, that's, uh, that's gravy time. That's exciting. That's a plus, you know? But when you start getting in your 20s and it ain't happening, then it's like, all right, listen, I deserve this. I mean, I need this. It wouldn't be nice. I need it. <laughs> I mean, this is why... You you take you take 16, 17-year-old guys who ain't getting any ass. They're not seeing prostitutes. 
All right. You see a 22, 23 year old guy ain't getting anything. He's going to a cat house. But, but again, this point. is what this is how different men and women are. There are women that want it like that, but don't. Guys must have. Right. Like that, the life depends upon it. Yeah. Guys, it's it's uh, it's pretty slim pickings, 18 to, uh, you know, 23, 24, 25. All you can do, fellas, is use that time to up your place in the world so that you can cash in. Cash in. Or just crawl out. I mean, not cash in. Listen, you, you can become, you can have totally different careers with women as a man. Mm-hmm. I've seen it. I've seen it in guys around me. It's true. I've seen guys that couldn't get a damn thing going. Now they're making some money. They got their ass together. They've gotten position of power. They're 20 pounds heavier. They're minus a little bit of hair. And they're getting tons and tons of chicks. You can do this. And it's not money, but money's part of it. It's position. It's position. Jessica? Jessica? Caller who goes by Jessica? Oh, that's that. I haven't done that in a while. Yeah, one of those tonight. Let's talk to uh, Ryan. Ryan? Yeah. 17. Yeah. Virgin. Um, Virgin, by the way. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I had a question. Um, can you grow hair on your uh, scrotum? I or can. You... Yeah, most people can. Or Oh, no, I, I just could... sprung one. <laughs> I thought you could just grow it, like, uh, above your penis. Above your penis? Yeah. I was told in class. Are yeah. you, uh, are you, is it true you're virgin, Ryan? No. Oh, come on. No. Give Adam, me a break. Adam. What year were you born? 84. And what month? December. And what sign are you? Uh, Sagittarius. That's right. All right. You just dodged a bullet, my friend. <laughs> but, but we'll meet again. And when we do, this time you won't be so lucky. <laughs> but now the virgin part, though. No. Oh, yeah. Who'd you have sex with? Um, uh, Don't give us a name, but girlfriend? Yeah. How many times? Just, Just once. once. Just once. And what, what do you mean by sex? Uh, it wasn't really sex. Just playing around. Okay. Here we go. So you, you've, you've never really had intercourse? No. See, let me tell you the beauty of us and me, more importantly. Well, I got that one, too. I know, but I'm talking to a 17-year-old guy, and God knows 90% of our 17-year-old males are not virgins anymore. And we say virgin, and he says, no, not a virgin. And you know what? That ain't enough. We don't believe him. Now, why that's not enough? I don't know. He's 17, and he says he's not a virgin. That seems like enough. And he's not a liar. Oh, but he is. Well, he's a stretcher, but it's not a bogus call. No, no, right. He's not intending to lie to us. Yeah, that's right. Not but premeditated lie. Because people are uh, that predictable, we have to keep going until we realize that so he is we, actually so a virgin. we find the truth. Now we can sleep at night. So, Ryan. Yeah? You want to know about uh, the pubic hair on the scrotum. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, as you get older, you will eventually be covered with hair. Every part of your body. Okay. Top of your toes get hair. That's always a weird one. <laughs> one of my kids discovered that today in me. Ball sack gets uh, hair on oh, it. that too. No. <laughs> no, they were, they were freaking out about their hair on my toes. It, it seems, and by the way, and Drew, you're not a hairy guy, so this has not really happened to you. It keeps going. I mean, as a guy, sure, your penis is done growing. Your, uh... Your height is done. You're done at 18, 17, 18 years old. You ain't done with hair. No. No, you ain't done. Well, that's the most attractive part about a male. It's good. At least yeah. that keeps growing. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've, I've seen some of my buddies, I've seen their backs spring up between the ages of 29 and 33. Good times. You know, and a difference between 33 and 38 on a dude. Well, most of those guys. Dudes that, will yeah. keep going. Those guys that spread and develop the sort of pelt. Right. At least they keep a big full head of hair then. No. No? Hair starts falling out. What? Yeah. That's, the, that's the ironic thing. The ironic thing is guys who I know whose hair is thinning out, their hair started thinning at about mm, 26, 28, maybe 30, and the back hair just kept coming. It spreads. And the hair will continue to fall out of their head, and the back hair will continue. Good <laughs> times. I am uh, I am blessed that I have no back hair, by the way, but uh, big 
big uh, pant full of ass hair, and uh, now it's coming out of my ears. Mm, that's nice. That's a nice, like the nose and the ear hair. That's a nice feeling, having to yeah. pluck that. Oh, that doesn't feel, yeah. Mm. Yeah, and uh, having the nose. Now, the nose I don't pluck, because that'll make your eyes water. I mean, that's But they have little devices to shave it. Yeah, but you just get little tweezers and, you know, yeah. give it a cut out. And, uh, yeah, keep going. Eyebrows, you know, tempting to uh, fuse together as usual. Hey, it's a mess. I'm a mess. I like that I have no forearm hair. Remember? Drew has no hair on his forearm, and his brow, what, your neck doesn't get hair? Hmm. Could you grow a beard? Mm, just no, just the hair. Not, not uh, you. You uh, grow like a Chinaman's beard, right? Yeah. And, and you know, what does she want? What does she want from me? And I'm like, you know what I want? I'm like, you know what I've always wanted? I've always wanted you to just like not. Oh, I knew that was coming. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> Our colors are so predictable. Uh, we were Both just, of us were wrong. Waiting. I know. We were just we just punched up a call, and uh -huh. uh, she was talking to somebody. She else. was speaking to someone on the other line, or someone in the room. <laughs> Must have been speaking to someone in the room because the other line wouldn't have worked, and we could hear her conversation. And I thought this is fun. And then my next thought is, is she's one of our callers. She's going to use the F word. Any second. And I was like, 10. And then I was like, no, 5, 4, Boom. 3. And then the F word came flying out. But just in a casual conversation. Let's do it again. All right. All right. All right. Let's listen. All the oh. <laughs> All the right. You can just blab out just the bull S part. Just the S. Now. Let's do it again. Well, hold on a second. Come on, it's, it's, it's well, a wait, 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 wait a second now. Drew, first off, we've got to repot up here. We've got to reboot up this thing, yeah. our delay. And secondly, I have to explain to people, because I'm not sure what this is sounding like on the air. With the delay breaking up. Instead. That's right, that we punched out we got it all. after she said you, the you, F word. You, you could just block out the one word. All right. all right. And we just punched back in, and she said... Are we uh, booted up? We're ready? She said the S word. Ready. All right, let's try again. For her to say something like that? Because she turns around and says to me, Oh, Ten. Uh, oh, I said that. Uh, I go, Yes, I go, I go. Thanks for the conversation. Thanks for the fun evening. And she said to me, Four. She's like, Oh, yeah. Three. Um, two. Hold on. It's weird. I could, like, hear the radio now. Silence. Blah, 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 blah. What do you say, Drew? Let me tell you about high school football. Blah, 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 all right. I think that works. <laughs> I think that's, yeah, we're back on the air, huh? Good. I don't know, all well, the hair is blah, 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 blah. I'll tell you what's wrong with the goddamn world, Drew. Ah, blah, 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 Mayor of the universe. Ah, blah, 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 blah. Heated sofa. Blah, 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 blah. Crotch sniffing dogs. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, time to beat off. Blah, 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 blah. Like the big breasts. Blah, 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 blah. High school football. Blah, 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 blah. Construction. Blah, 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 blah. Cars. Blah, 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 blah. Parking enforcement personnel. Blah, 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 blah. Let's take our next call. Oh, was that the S word that back there? That was the there? S word again. Yes, it was. Was that the S word we heard in the background? Oh, oh, yeah. Was sure? Got the, my S confiscated. Oh, yes. Very definitely. I don't know. Ann says no. Producer Ann says no. All right. Let's take our next call. Ann. Ann Marie. Yes. Hi. Hey, you're on Love Line. How are you How doing, are you? baby? I I just, better nights. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. It took so long. I was just talking to Drew about some current events. Stuff That's like quite that. all right. All right. Um, 31 years old, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, here's the deal. I was involved 
in an incestual relationship with my brother for quite some time. I, I'm a little foggy on exactly when it happened, um, for the duration of time, when it started and when it ended, but I know that it was approximately about 10 years on and off. Start, uh, starting so approximately when? Approximately when I was around five. All right. And how old was he? He's four and a half years older than I am. And had anyone abused you or anything prior to that? No. So what usually sets up that sort of thing is someone gets to one of the kids. So probably your brother was sexually abused. This is what I've always thought in the back of my head. Yeah. Um, Did you guys have sex? We never actually had intercourse, but um, there was a lot of oral sex, um, you know, a lot of right. hands-on, but it uh, never right. actually got to intercourse. So it went until you were 15? Yes. All right. Approximately, maybe All right. 14. All right. And for him, he was like 20. Yeah. Okay. Had a girlfriend at the time, you know, while it was still going on. Beauty of guys there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I never told anybody about it until I was 19 and had already moved out of my house and was living with somebody. Okay. Um, basically, I, I think it came about, it like resurfaced with me, you know, like the horrors of it, um, and started coming to terms with it on my own at that time. And, uh decided that I needed to talk to somebody about it. I confided in a family member um, that was not, you know, one of my parents. And they swore to me they would never say anything. They never did, and they've still held true to this day. But uh, about a year ago, I got engaged. And since then, my relationship with my parents, because recently after I got engaged, I had a humongous arg argument with my mom, and it ended up turning out that I told her what happened between me and my brother. Oh, wow. wow. Um, bad times. And <laughs> Yeah, really bad time. It's like I'm a glutton for punishment. But uh, after yeah. I told her, she immediately, the immediate response was, you are an effing liar. Mm -hmm. And from that point on, I'm just like, you know, what right. do I do? You know. Well, uh, hold on. Let's, let's quiet, quiet down for a second here. First off, that's uh, horrible what happened to you. Second off, we believe you. Third off, I, I think with your parents, especially your mom, I don't know, it's like so devastating that they, they you couldn't yeah, even accept it. They can't, yeah. I, I suspect there were it's a lot of stuff going on in your family already that this kind of thing went on unnoticed for so many years. And now to try to break through her denial about something as devastating as this, just about impossible. And unfortunately, you'd like her to be able to sort of acknowledge the pain you've been through, uh, maybe be, uh, you know, remorseful that this happened to you. But the fact is, she just just can't do it. Can't do it. And that, that you, you, that's the way it goes. You, you have to accept that's the way your parents are. All right. So what you really need to do is get some therapy in. Marie. Yeah. Yeah. For yourself and your mom and your mom's denial of it and your dad, whatever shape he's in, and your brother, whatever he, shape he's in. It's all water that's way under the bridge. You, you, it's not going to change what you need. Right. Like, they're being accepting, they're being loving, they're being available. Still wouldn't change what you need right now. You need some help with this. No. And, and not, you know, not only that, they aren't going to be that way. There's just no way. Yeah, and, and don't try to get something out of them that they're not going to give you. It's just banging your head against the wall. I, I think that's what it is. I, I, don't, I don't even think, I'm not too sure what it is I'm trying to get. You know, I don't know if, well, my, you... I don't know if my relationship with my brother is ever going to be repairable. And as far as my parents are concerned right now, you know, we're still, we're social and we hang out as if nothing ever mm -hmm. happened. And every now and again, the argument comes up and I have a blowout with my mom and, and it just goes back to the same resentment. All right, but have. listen, Anne, Anne Marie, therapy, therapy, therapy. 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 That's yeah. it. That's it. And let you you going around and uh, trying to uh, convert mom. Trying to convert yeah. mom is like uh, some old uh, jock who dropped or missed the winning field goal in a football game from high school in 1974, going to the old field yeah. at night mm -hmm. with a six pack and sitting there. It, it's really. It's not going to change the outcome right. at all. No. You want to go back and make the field goal? No. No, you can't really do that. But if you want to make it okay that you missed the field goal, you got to go to therapy. Yep. When, uh, when we come back, we're going to speak to a uh, prison guard who uh, knows why a 17-year-old could be in prison for life without uh, parole. We, uh, I was talking about this at the top of the show because I was out in uh, Lancaster and went to a maximum security prison today and hung out with some uh, inmates. And, uh, you know, made a lot of friends out there. <laughs> we'll be back. Hey, everybody.
everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That is uh, Dr. Drew over there. Phone number 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. <laughs> You're lucky I'm tired tonight, Anderson. Yeah, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> 50,000 watt flame floor. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> Are you ready to go here, Drew? Ready to go. Here we go. Good times. Crystal. Yes. You're 38? Yes. You all right, baby? Oh, yeah. Great. Okay. You you on a speakerphone or something? Kind of. Anyway, some of the reasons why... Hold on there, Crystal. Yeah. Could you... Crystal, could you get off the speakerphone? Actually, no, I can't. Okay. Uh, that's th something that you should state. Okay. Go ahead, baby. Okay. Um, kidnap, false imprisonment, rape carjacking, murder, or multiple murders, and it would be a combination of, like, not necessarily all of these things, but some of them, and it would be called extenuating circumstances or mitigating circumstances. Well, th this was my point. Adam, Adam at yes. the beginning of the show, was saying, well, you know, this guy's just underprivileged and didn't have the right representation. He uh -uh. probably just fell over with his knife and stabbed uh -uh. someone at a liquor store. And I said, no way. This has to be multiple heinous, hold unbelievable on. things. Hold on, hold on. How dare you? I didn't say that. I said the guy committed the crime when he was probably 16 and change, and there probably was mitigating circumstances. Yeah, he probably picked up his girlfriend and took her out to the woods and shot her. You know what I mean? And then it was false imprisonment, kidnapping, and murder one. Do you know what, I'm, what I mean? I'm not... I'm just saying he, he didn't go on a 15-state killing spree at the 16 and a half on a moped. That's all well, I'm saying. Well, if that was the case, he'd be in federal prison. Oh, if he went on a killing yeah, where spree? Where were you today, anyways? Uh, I was at Lancaster. Oh. It's good times over oh, there. yeah. It's nice, nice when that 300-degree uh, wind comes <laughs> kicking down off the mountain and blows a cigarette ash in your the cornea. The high desert. Yeah, it is the cramp desert over there. you got to be high to be in that desert. That's why they call it the high desert. Exactly. So you're saying uh, if, if in your 17-year-old guy you got locked up and you're going to be there the rest of your life, uh, it would be a, uh, it'd be a circumstance such as kidnap. A, lot of, a combination of a lot of things or, or a few things, you know what I mean? Right, and right. have to be heinous crimes. Right, and and also, uh, and what about climate? I mean, what about uh, political climate? Better times? See, there's better times to commit certain crimes, I believe, and better states to do it in, right? Um, I would guess, but I'd rather not be in Texas. <laughs> yeah. You know, Calif California's pretty lenient. And, uh, and what do you know about, what's your feeling on representation? Uh, you know what, I, I don't really know. Seems, I don't really know about the representation. It always feels to me like if you got enough money to throw at something, you can get at least the best possible scenario, not necessarily you're walking. Well, you know, you talk to these guys and you don't know whether to believe them or not. Oh, listen. Listen, I talk. Thanks for calling, by the way, Crystal. I talked to a guy. This guy was scary. He's about 6'4", he's about 250. He was sort of built sort of solid. And again, he sort of looked sort of friendly, but in a sort of thousand yard stare kind of way mm. and uh i was like uh what's up what's up with you what are you in life and again the guy you know the guy's 28 or something you know life i said uh wow what uh, what happened you know, multiple friends no I said uh what, what's uh, how long have you been here six months I don't know why, but the guys, the lifers who've just been there for six months, I would feel a little more depressed for us. Mm. If the guys have been there for 12 years or something, or become a way of life. Mm -hmm. What's up? He was playing the guitar, you know. Uh, Did everyone just, all the prisoners playing the guitar there? Well, these, this is the reason we uh, started talking to this guy. El Cabong, as he was known <laughs> on the prison yard. And he said, uh, you know, he was a chopper pilot, like a commercial chopper pilot. And everything was going great. Hey, uh... Walked into a bar, got into a uh, fight, broke out, and he broke some guy's arm or something. You know, I was like, it was really, basically, to hear him say it, he was working as a chopper pilot. Everything was great. Had a good gig. No priors or anything. Stopped off at a bar. Big fight broke out. He somehow broke a guy's arm. He's in jail for life. Now life with no possibility <laughs> yeah. of parole. And, and we, we didn't really bust his chops on it too much because I didn't want him to bust the guitar over my head. But uh, Jimmy and I sort of looked at each other when we walked away and said, it seems like there's got to be just a little more.
to that story. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that's uh, normally how it goes. Still, can't help but feel sorry for the guys who uh, got thrown in 16, 17 years old. Do not assume that everyone's brain operates similarly. Look, I... You know what I'm saying? I am saying that there's a fair, fair, overwhelming majority of those guys need to be in there and then some. I'm saying there's a handful of those guys that if you met them, your heart would go out to them. Mm. It, re it really would, regardless of what they did 15 years ago. See, if you were a woman, you'd be wanting to date these guys. I did blow one of the oh, guys. Okay. Right. Got to be honest. Yeah, that's what I figured. Got to be honest with yeah, you. Yeah, well, thank you. Mike? Hey, how's it going, guys? You're 19. Yeah. Well, my girlfriend, uh, we've been going out for about two years. It'll be two years in August. Well, uh, I, well, we didn't have sex for about eight months after we started going out. And then we didn't have it that much. And then after a while, it kind of went to nothing. We just stopped. Fantastic. Yeah, it's great, huh? Well, um, she, I ask her, you know, can we do it? And she's afraid of getting pregnant and all this stuff. And I tell her I'll buy the pill for her, you know, use condoms and get, like, contraceptives and all that stuff. And she still won't go for it. And she won't even let me touch down there. She won't fool around with me or anything. And, and it's, it's been how long since this has been going on? Well, this is, I haven't gotten laid for the last, like, seven, eight months. How about the no touch? Um, the no touch. I mean, she'll give me hand jobs and stuff like that, but that's about it. That's sweet. That's what's um, considerate. And she doesn't like you doing stuff to her. No, not at all. Oh, um, all right. I I say uh, one of two things. Okay. Drew, can you guess what these two things are? A. She's done. Right. B. She's done. <laughs> C. <laughs> C. Um, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Then maybe she got so already had a plan that she didn't want to be involved like this till she was married and got mm, kind of guilty. And no, no, D. I, here's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, okay. A, yeah. B, she's a, done. A, a, B, and C, she's done. D, something happened to her. She got fiddled with, and she's getting weird now. It's starting to come back. Mm, good she's getting some weird energy and well, some weird feelings. She's told me about this thing that, like, her, she doesn't remember this, but her mom told her something about because her mom split up with her dad. And she said something about her dad, but she doesn't know anything about this or remember it, that her dad um, either molested her or did something like that to her. Right, well, there you go. And I was thinking about that. Well, well that's, that's D. part of it, yeah. And that's probably it. Now, this may be uh, A, B, C, and D. This may be all the above. I would say, right, D. It may be A subset D. A, B, and C forced D here. Right. And even if it is D, A and B and C are still applicable. Mm -hmm. You can't right. do anything about it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or applicable. Oh, okay. Well, um, also, I got... Uh, can I say something else? Yeah. Well, um, I got in trouble with the law when I was 17. Okay, that's E. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, well... I mean, you're doing E? Huh? No, okay, go ahead. Well, they sent they sent me to a... Uh, they didn't send me to prison. They sent me to, like, one of those scared straight... Yeah, yeah. ...to prison. Give me your shoes, mother effa! <laughs> and, well, uh, you know, and it was pretty scary. I mean, they had... There's this this guy that was in there for life for first degree and he was up in my face yelling at me and I thought it was pretty scary and he looked like a killer you know how you're talking about how they seemed yeah uh, you know yeah well but but you gotta understand <laughs> they were hired for that that's they yeah. were selected for that yeah, yeah that's true yeah you understand if you want to scare kids away from going to prison you don't talk to the nice guy with right. the John Denver type yeah. glasses who's got a big smiley face is playing the guitar and singing to you, you know, how many men must a man kill he even fooled Adam. before he loses chance of parole? Yeah, I mean, the guy, the guy seemed like a sweetheart. I was really, I was really to, uh, I was ready to keister the guy and smuggle him out. <laughs> <laughs> this close to keistering one of those inmates, Drew. Nice. Okay, so, Mike. I'm sure they were this close to keistering you. <laughs> yeah. Mike, she's uh, broken up. Oh, she's pulling way out. And, and whether it's because she was monkeyed with or not, it seems like she's she's done. There's not they, her body's saying something. There's, and there's nothing Mike can do. And after all, he's been sort of weaned off uh, the weenus here anyway. Mm -hmm. So I just think she did get fiddled with. She's going to have some issues, and Mike may be out whether he knows it or not. Right. Okay. We'll be back. <laughs> Hey, yo, 
Drew Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. <sighs> All righty. Let's uh, keep piling forward here. Speak to Anita, who's 18. Anita? Hi. Hey. Uh, I'm 18, and I have a big problem. All right. I never had a date. I'm a virgin. I've never been kissed. I've never had a boyfriend. So what's wrong with me? You need You're a fat. <laughs> Let's make a little pun. Anita needs a I just penis. graduated from high school, too. Yeah. So, are you fat? No, not really. All I right. mean, I'm bigger than normal some, like, chilliers, but I'm not that fat. Let me do a little radio math. Uh, what size are you? I'm about 180, maybe like 175 around there. What uh, what height are you? I'm about 5'7". Five, 5'7", seven. Five, seven, 180. Uh, bear with me for a second. I got 5'4 uh, and a quarter, 196. She's not amused. Yeah. <laughs> no one's amused with my brain. Rarely do I get a good response with my radio math, but you, you have to do it. You're overweight. All right, please. So, Anita, uh -huh. you're, uh, you could be a little bit of a late bloomer. You know, not everything goes on for everyone at the same time. You got a couple little extra weight on you. That can slow the guys down a little bit, not the black guys, but it can slow some guys down a little bit. What are you looking for? I'm looking for a date, man. I don't want. I, I don't want to be like an old spinstress. My fr yeah, I want to have some fun. I want to talk to guys, and every my friends say that guys are checking me out and stuff like that. My mom says it too, and I just like probably don't realize it because like I don't want to come on too strong, you know? Right. They, like flirt with me and stuff like that, and I don't want to. You, you. By the way, you come know. On too strong. You know things aren't in great shape socially when your parents are jumping in going, no, I, I think that dude wants to F you. That's, that a, guy yeah, that's a problem. Yeah, he's, uh, also, I don't mean a problem. I just mean it, it goes to show that times aren't good. Another thing. If a guy is into her, there's no such thing as too aggressive. What do you mean? I mean, if a guy was attracted to her and she came on like a gangbuster, oh, yeah. he'd be relieved. Well, oh, yeah. I, re I really don't know how to flirt, you know, and I don't want to be, like, come on, like, desperate, you know? Well, well don't worry about don't, it. Don't if the guy's into it, he's just, he's bring it on. Yeah. L worry listen, you you saying I don't know, it, you get, you're too up in your head. You just got to, if you're into a guy, go talk to him. I you don't have to worry to about it. Dick. <laughs> hey, uh, Anita? Yeah? But uh, I got to be honest with you. Uh, the weight, while uh, now not uh, morbidly obese, is uh, 180 is a uh, good size. And uh, that, that'll slow guys down a little bit. And you're 18 just for, uh, you know, personal reasons. Why don't you work on uh, working out, eating a good diet and everything. And then uh, the, the pounds start melting away. You get some exercise. You feel a little better about yourself. You yeah, look in the mirror. You like what you see. And it becomes a little more more easy, the relationships. You, you get that confidence. But don't worry about being too aggressive. Do so not worry like, about that. So, like, with guys, I should flirt back and yes, not, like, yes. worry about anything else? Do not worry about it. Right. All right. And All right. Uh, hit hit that die, too, baby, right? All right. Thank you. All righty. Good times. <laughs> I'm 6'2", and I'm, like, 190, and I think I look fat when I'm <laughs> in the mirror. <laughs> Who doesn't think they look fat? Anderson, do you do you uh, you got a good image, or are you just like wait, are you a mess? I'm I'm huge. Just like the rest of us. No, but ever everyone doesn't like. No one likes what they see when they look in the mirror. But there's still a very small like kernel in your brain that thinks you're super hot, but the rest of you really knows you need a lot of work. Kernel. It's just a, it's just a little kernel in there. There's there's part. There's, you got to be honest. There's a mixture of you that goes, hey baby, but it's me. <laughs> Tries to roll. I've just started. That's, that's my you. thing now. Oh, that's really? You. That's you. My my thing is, is look, I know I don't look like that, and I know I'm not as good looking but as I'm I may. Up, but come on, I'm me. <laughs> you two oh. look so different on TV. I was watching the man show, like, last week, and that's not you. Yeah. Man, I don't know like, who that person is. He's not saying you look better on TV. <laughs> no, no, I look worse on TV. I, I ah. always always have. Oh, boy. Always have. That's nice. I, I've never, I've never... That's a good thing it's your chosen career path. That's right. Yeah. We're on radio now, you know. I could hear my nasally drone, but I've never seen a publicity picture of myself where I looked good. By the way, always look better when uh, Ann just takes a shot with us in the bands uh, after the show. You know why when a horse eats hay, you hear that that 
the teeth click together and there's that crunching noise. Yeah. When you eat, that's what it sounds like. Except there's also the <laughs> on top of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, it's not that crunching. It's like yeah. the teeth clicking, in, like, like a horse chewing hay. Well, you know, I'm missing a couple of teeth now. I don't know if wow. that screwed me up. And I'm not, I, uh, I won't put them back. I'm now, I'm still starting to think, what do I need them for? Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. What do I need these two teeth for? I got them pulled. Been living with it for two months. Seems fine to me. It's a hell of a lot easier to floss between the uh, one and four tooth than it was <laughs> when you get rid of the two and three. You got this huge thing. I could, I could uh, floss with an anchor chain. That's great. <laughs> and my dentist, again, asked me if I was uh, hooked on mints. Oh. or uh, any kind of hard candy. And again, all right, now hold on a second. I got to give the genetic speech one more time, and, and this is going to be fast, and it's going to be tooth-related, and I hope my dentist is listening, but I hope everybody's listening. My dentist is looking at my teeth like a week ago, and he asked me for really the third time. Are, by the way, there's nothing more insulting than this. Are, are you sure you don't eat a lot of candy? No. Oh, actually, I just polished off a baby bar, <laughs> but other, hard, hard candy, other than the last four minutes, no. Do you, no, it is, do you, do you, do you suck on mints a lot? No. Do you, do you have, is there some kind of like, uh, I don't know, cough, pill, uh, cough drop or something that you're constantly sucking on? N no, I have, I'm prone to cavities. It's one more reason I need to kick my dad in the nuts. I brush my goddamn teeth. I floss my goddamn teeth. I probably have a better diet than most. I mean, I probably eat less candy and less sweets than your average guy and probably take care of my teeth about the same as your average guy. Some guys have zero cavities. Some guys have a mouthful of cavities. Why? Jeans. Jeans. Jeans, everybody. Jeans. Even the dentist, whose profession is effing with people's teeth, can't accept it. It's like... You sure? Like, at some point, I'm going to have a revelation and go, yeah, you know what I do? I take a handful of milk duds, I shove them in my mouth every night before I go to bed, and I just fall asleep. Sometimes they're melted when I wake up. Other times, there's whole milk duds lying around the bed and pillow. Are you sure you don't eat any? Oh, no. It's, it's really, it's really, it, look at your height, look at your eye color, look at the size of your ass, look at the color of your hair. It's all the same. It all gets dealt to you. It just does. And us, a guy who doesn't have cavities should not write a book on it. And I should not be punished for having cavities. Just like I shouldn't, we shouldn't punish people for the color of their skin, the color of their eyes, or the width of their ass. Thank you. So be it. We can't get past that as a society. We just can't. David, what's up? Hey, Adam and um, Dr. Drew. Hey, what's going I on? I have these sores on my body. Mm -hmm. And you were mentioning to a girl about... If they're symmetrical, I guess, on each side, evenly, like? Well, symmetry just suggests different kinds of dermatologic disorders. Uh -huh. But uh, they're like little ulcers? Um, they're like, get dark and they have red spots on them, and then when they go away, they leave a little dents in, in the skin. Do you pick at them? Yeah, I pick at them. Do you do speed or cocaine? Oh, I do crack, yeah. All right. Well, these are picker syndrome. This is every stimulant addict gets this thing. Oh. You do crack. I mean, come yeah, on, David. I know. I know. Then you, the people, they start believing you have little hairs in there or there's glass in there. David, you pick at them. David and, smokes. Uh, no, I don't. I just try and pull them off because they itch. Or they're bugs. Well, you get them started. Like that, things attached to them. Like when I pull it, the, the blood will just come out and there will be little black dots in it. Right. Well, that's nothing. That's I've, just you looking I've, at that. I bet and you, that. David. David probably die. David does crack. Probably die. Lives off a soft swirl ice cream and marathon bars. I bet his teeth are better than mine. <laughs> mine are. I bet you have less cavities in your thirty-eight-year-old mouth than I do. Yeah, I probably have six fillings altogether. Yeah, well, I got sixty. Yeah. I actually, if I sprung a new tooth, I would owe a cavity on it. Well, the, the speed addicts tend to get more preoccupied with what's in what they're picking. The cocaine addicts just pick. Pick, 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 pick. And the, the laboratory animals pick, and the humans pick. They do? Yep. When you say pick, you don't mean play the banjo. No, I mean dig at their skin. Interesting. Sure you don't eat mints. <laughs> Robert? Yes. You're uh, 21. Yes, I am. Uh, first couple of these guys, Adam, uh, three words, you're the man. <laughs> and Drew, uh, you're one of the reasons why going into medicine, I 
with you guys all day long when I'm sitting for Oakham and stuff like that. So. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> Don't um, be a fool, you idiot. <laughs> That's a new one. So what's going on? Uh, well, I, I'm a vegetarian, and I eat a lot of soy products. Mm. And I've heard that a lot of the menopause re re replacements are made out of soy, and hence they have a lot of estrogen in it. And I'm 21, and ever since I think I've been about like 12, 13-ish, I've had like man boobs. Yeah. And they're, they're not like really big boobs. They're just like maybe, say, a, right. I don't know, B cup, A cup size, you know? All right, well, here's the deal. At, at early in puberty, there's estrogen-like chemicals being produced by the adrenal glands. And the testosterone hasn't yet really replaced what's being produced by the adrenals. And so around that age, when men commonly will get some man boob growth that will go away. I wonder if the what are called phytoestrogens, the plant estrogens in the soy, are what maybe sustained it. Uh -huh. Smoking a lot of pot is another way to get it sustained, too. Uh, yeah, I don't do drugs. But um, yeah. I, I was told when I was like 13, like, yeah, I had a, like a, a checkup. And, and the physician said, yeah, you know, if these don't go away while you're, while you're 17, come back and tell us. And I, I just don't have the balls to go tell us. Well, yeah. and sometimes so. it just stays on. Sometimes it's no reason. It's just you. That's what, And there are plastic surgical procedures to Let me get my that, speech right. again. <laughs> <laughs> you there at you 21 go. eating uh, some soy is not going to give you man boobs or well, smoking I, I, a little I reefer. Soy, like practically every meal, like I have soy chicken, soy steak, soy shrimp. That's you know, a lot of it. You yeah. name it. Intestine, I've had all, I have it all. So still not nothing. You're prone <laughs> to it. Go back and talk to the doctor. Yeah, but I mean, you're just that's you. That's Pro what's, probably your true. Probably I, true. I, I, I'm done. I can't take any more of all this stuff. All right, let's take a break. Everyone's got a, a workout secret. My ass. Hmm. That's the point. I should write a book on how to get cavities. Uh. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. Here's how, the Adam Carolla book for how to get cavities. Don't eat a lot of candy and brush and floss your teeth. Have my, That's have, what my book would read. Have That's, your parents. I said, do it. Well, I get a lot of cavities. I must know. Idiots. Well, that is it. We will uh, be back here tomorrow night. I'm going to uh, run home and uh, get myself cavity. <laughs> by hey, not hey, Oh, by brushing, of course. Well, here's yeah. my thing with my dentist. Look, I want him to say, look, I want to say to the guy, if I'm getting all these cavities, I'm going to start sucking on something because... You want to have a reason to have them. I like to feel like I've earned the cavity, yeah, or at sure. least enjoy my hard candies. You better ask him, though, about the implant stuff, whether you're going to lose the potential of getting them. Yeah, I think you know your I mean? teeth start closing up. And your bone may change. I don't know. All right. Yeah, good times. Good times. Good times. I'll, I'll dream about that tonight. All right, Pops. So until next time, it's Adam Kroll for Dr. Drew saying, Mahala. That's, that's me. I don't, I don't want people to hear what I have to say. That's a damn lie, and you know it! This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Wilkins Ingle. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.